Hi, my name is Denisha Merriweather, founder of Black Minds Matter, and I am so excited to be joined by Brandy Williams. She is the school founder in New Orleans, and we actually just hosted an event together for Founders Day, which is something new that we did in New Orleans, and we hope to continue to do it every single year. So, Brandy, thanks so much for joining. Um, how are you doing? I am living the dream. Very excited um, coming off of my son's graduation. It's yeah. been an amazing week, so I'm very excited. Yeah, so first, let I'll give uh, the folks who are going to be listening to this some background on the event that we hosted because it was really amazing. So you were one of four panelists, um, all women, who founded schools in the New Orleans area talking about the amazing work that you guys are doing um, to further education for students um, in the in the Louisiana area. Um, you were so powerful. You had the crowd just laughing. It's so interactive with the crowd. Um, it was fantastic. And you also shared and you talked about your son. Yeah, graduation, his graduation and just the success that he's had um over the years in his education thanks to you i would say because of because of the your intentionality so yeah first talk to me a little bit about you know yourself give me your your background your bio how you got involved in the education space sure um how i got involved in the education space was by happenstance i think um my son really drew me in. So when he was about two years old, I realized that I wanted to become a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Uh, teaching him became a love affair for me. Um, it was so exciting and he was so excited to learn. Um, this is year 22 in education for me. And as a school leader and founder, I can tell you that this has been a whirlwind of a journey. Um, I started my school journey in 2015, shortly after um, I experienced some serious challenges with my son. Um, my son is a twice exceptional student, so he's gifted and talented as well as um, has IEP needs. And what we found in the New Orleans landscape is that he wasn't being serviced either way um, for his gifted and talented needs, nor for his educational deficiencies. Uh, as a result of that, we started a nonprofit that was specifically designed Generation Success to help students in the New Orleans area who had IEP needs. Um, in doing the nonprofit, we started to really want to build our own school for specifically for students who had educational challenges, but that would work for everyone. And so um, that's kind of where the underpinnings of Generation Success became Have a Healing Academy which is the school that will open in August of 2022. Um, just, you know, if I'm gonna be honest, we've learned so much along this journey, but the thing that has kept us going in our why is that there is unequivocal genius among black and brown bodies. Mm -hmm. There just is an unequivocal opportunity. And so we want to come in and be a bridge between the genius that we know exists helping them to empower themselves so that they can become their own catalysts for change. And at the same time, building a community hub where parents, families, students, caretakers, community stakeholders can all come together and pour into the lives of children. That's what makes ABBA Healing so special. Yeah. And I think it, you know, every founder has their story, you know, why yeah. they decided to get involved. And yours is so personal. Like your son was not in a good place and you're yeah. like, I need to do something and I can do something about it. So when did that shift come? Because you were a school administrator, you worked yes. in schools, you knew the environment, the landscape. So when was that, when did that light bulb go off for you when you realized I can actually be a player like in this, I can found a school. Like when did that go off? Um, when I was crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
uh, it, it actually didn't go off for me by myself. Um, what happened was we sued the school district that my son was a part of um, because just, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. What I will say is um, we had a situation where my son uh, needed to get some mental health counseling immediately. Um, he was being bullied by educators at the school where he was. And like I said, his needs weren't being serviced. It was to a point that it was just tumultuous and toxic. So in doing research around whether or not my son was the exception or if he was actually the rule, we learned that my son was only the tip of the iceberg, that many, many other students had the same issues. And so it was people that were around me who literally said, you need to do this. You need to open a school. And I looked at them like they were nuts and had three heads because that was not my goal. Um, but it's where we are now and it is my goal and it's my passion. Wow. Um, and so t talk to me a little bit about, you know, how how the development is coming. You mentioned, you, you know, your school is going to open in August. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What is what has that been like? What is that process like? <sighs> Tanisha, there are not enough hours in the day to explain what this process is like. Um, it is it's all the emotions bottled into one. Uh, it is excitement, it is pain, it's tears of happiness and tears of sadness, it's everything. Um, the best thing I can call it is the most beautiful tornado I've ever seen in my life, right? Um, the school that we founded, Abba Healing Academy, there's a couple things that I think people should know first and foremost. Number one, Abba Healing Academy, as far as any persons that we've come in contact with, funders, myself, others that do this work is the first in the world, the first in the world to do what we are doing. Um, number one, it's a private school. So we teach um, a mixture of African to traditional religion with Catholicism, which is known as condole. The only schools that teach condole in the world are in Brazil right now, Brazil and in some parts of Africa. Those schools typically do not have national accreditation. We do. Um, secondarily, we're the only school in the United States to open that teaches condole. Literally, we know that to be the fact. So the school itself has this basis where we're empowering students to find the beauty in themselves, in their heritage, and live as a one family, as one with the universe, as one with the morals and ethics that we espouse for Jesus Christ to be able to do change effectively in their communities. Our students from kinder all the way up through eighth grade, which we are a K to eight school, do community service that they identify once a month. So they're in the community doing the work every month themselves, right? Secondarily to that, they're also learning project and inquiry based approaches so that they're able to research more, even as kindergartners, what needs to change in their community. You'd be surprised if you ask a kindergartner what they think is important in a playground, what they'll tell you, right? So we're just a vehicle to allow students to allow their genius to take the forefront and we facilitate that genius with them. That's awesome. And so talk to me a little bit about what is condoble? Okay, what I'm is so that? glad you asked. Condole is a faith practice where you marry African traditional religion. And so the African traditional religion includes ancestral veneration. It includes altar prayers. It includes feeding your altar and feeding the world. So we'll have a community garden where students are physically taking care of the world. They're taking care of the earth, feeding themselves and taking the fruit and food home. Um, it is also an opportunity for you to deepen your understanding of Jesus, but deepen your understanding of Jesus as it relates to your community. So you are not just one individual. You are a bigger part, a larger part of the community that is around you. And so you are able to understand how your needs intersect with the needs of others. Um, the most important thing about Condoble is understanding that your character development is critical to your life purpose and your life path. And so we're building natural intrinsic character development into the seams of the faith practice that we use. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what happens with, with churches, and you know, I'm not gonna call out anybody's religion, but what happens is you end up at a place where you see 
church is happening in the building, but it's not happening outside. Mm. For us, church happens outside within us every day. And it's an intentional choice. So that's condoling. Very cool. Very interesting. You learn something new every day. I've never, I, I heard you mention it mm-hmm. when we were in New Orleans on the panel, but to just learn more about it is so profound. I've never heard. And you said that the only schools that are teaching Kundoble is in Brazil and in some parts of Africa. Correct. So you are the, the first accredited and U.S.-based school that's teaching this new model. Correct. Yeah. This I, is true Seriously, I was just about to say that, like, I love doing these because I learned so much about just the cool, innovative things that y'all are doing as school founders. Like, I mean, who would have thought to to do this? You know, you're already a niche within a niche and now you're a niche, niche, niche. you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yes. The, the other part of our model that is so unique, um, just to, to look at best practices, because as I've said, I have two terminal degrees, one in education and one in psychology. And so we're marrying those two worlds together. Um, aside from the condoble practice, we also have a certified therapy dog program, which is huge, right? Um, the certified dog that we have, her name is Peppa. She actually just came back home today um, from a short vacation. Uh, she takes a vacation from us as well, you know, goes to <laughs> doggy daycare and does her thing. Um, but she she is a certified therapy dog, so she is able to help students to talk about, intrinsically learn about their feelings. For those students who are not really comfortable exploring who they are and their feelings right away, a therapy dog helps them to communicate with something that's not a human if they're not comfortable. It provides them with safety and security and the students themselves learn how to take care of the dog. So she's really, really well behaved, really, really well trained, super, super cute, love bug. Um, Another part of our model is that we offer personalized learning plans to every student. So we are one of three schools in Orleans Parish that provides IEP services as a private school. But in addition to the IEP services, we give our students personalized learning plans that follow them from K to eighth grade. And those plans include their personal ideals, they include academic and learning needs, and they include family things that we need to understand about the student to fully and and culturally responsibly educate them. Mm-hmm. And so t- talk to me a little bit about when you when you jumped off of this limb. Yeah, you describe it as being crazy of, you know, going down this school founding process, this school founding journey. And you told me how that was, you know, but maybe now that you're in the launch phase, like what does that look like? Like what is the majority of your time spent on? Is it student recruitment? Is it marketing? What are you mostly doing? The bulk of what we do, um, wow, it's it's a lot. I guess I would say the majority of my time is spent on culture building with the staff and recruitment with our families and culture building with the families. And so we, as I've said before, are community school. We empower our families to be a part of this process. So they've been a part of the building process with us. Um, I think when we did the panel, the Saturday prior to the panel, we had been laying floor tiles in the school building with families, right? So everything that we do is really tied to an understanding that our families are a huge part of what we, who we are, and we want to enculturate them in every piece of this school, right? Um, but when we talk about enrollment and what that means, we're in the community canvassing. We still do community events. And so we have a summer camp that's coming up for our families in the area. Um, the summer camp includes STEM and STEAM workshops. They also will have a robotics program for the first time. Um, they're going to have academic tutoring for or enrichment for the school year that's coming. And so you don't have to be a student at ABBA to attend. You can be a student at any school and still attend our summer program. Um, but that's that's like a lot of what we're doing right now, making sure that the community knows that we're here. Um, we received a grant. We were one of three locations in Louisiana to receive an American Library Association grant so that our library is fully functioning for parents who want to search for jobs, for parents who want to um, come and get GED prep or resume help, resume building. So we're, we're still in the community doing a lot of the pieces that we've always been known for. Um, personally, I am 
training educators right now. Um, we're still in the hiring phase, getting our last few hirees and meeting families. Like I physically am going to every family that enrolls at ABBA, introducing myself, bringing them their welcome package, answering any questions they may have, and just spending that time really getting to know the people who will be coming to our school. I take a staff member with me um, every time we go and do those family uh, events because we want the families to know the staff before they even touch the building. Like that's important to us that our families feel truly a part of our community. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to some other folks who might be interested in launching a school of their own? The first thing I'm going to tell you is to truly indoctrinate yourself in your why. Um, everyone that does this work learns something very early on. The work is very lonely or it can be very lonely. You can be very siloed as you're looking to open a school. So what I would enculturate people into is understanding your passion for this work. When it gets hard, when there are times where you get a thousand no's, you have to know why you're doing this still because some of those no's can be heartbreaking and gut-wrenching, right? The second thing I would say is find your village. Um, There are people who are doing this work all over the country. When you find your village, you are better able to pick the brains of people who have already been there. You're able to find community with like-minded individuals who have the same synergies that you do. Um, And you're able to be built up and validated because again, the only people that truly understand this work are the people that do it. Um, And so understanding who those folks are, getting back to those people and, and making sure that you talk to them on a regular basis is important. The third thing, understand your body and your self-care needs. It's very easy to reach burnout um, in doing this work. You've got to know when to take time for yourself. You've got to know when to prioritize your family. And you've got to know when you need to take a break and rest and just let all of the work go because the work is always going to be there. So those are the three things that I would say. Yeah. You are, I mentioned earlier, niche within a niche. But to explain that a little bit further, you are a school of choice. Um, Mm -hmm. So you're operating outside of the traditional education system. Mm -hmm. And then you are black founder. So that Mm -hmm. puts you in another very small percentage of of folks in the country um, who are founding schools of choice. Um, and your other niche is you're, you're teaching a very unique model to your mm-hmm. students. But there are folks out there who are opposed to your school operating. And yes. most of the time they look like us. They're, you know, we vote for them to be in office. And mm-hmm. so how does that make you feel when you are your mission? I've heard you say community, family, students like 50,000 times. And then you have the political landscape of it where it wants to prevent you from from really doing that how does what does that how does that make you feel um i think this was the mic drop moment on the panel (laughs) uh i'm gonna be really honest and frank with you i don't give a damn about those people i don't i don't care they can try and stop me and they have i'll I'll be really 1000 percent honest when we started this process we wanted to be a charter school because we wanted this to be free and we wanted it to be for our community it didn't work out because of the very reasons that you're saying right now politically they didn't want something new they wanted a regurgitation of the old that just kept producing the same thing over and over again and i'm still here and we're still opening so i gotta be really honest with you they can do whatever it is that they feel they need to, it's not gonna stop what God has for me because what God has ordained as necessary, it's gonna happen regardless. It may not happen in the time that you believe it to happen, but it's gonna happen. And you'll find the people who want to see you here. Right now, we have funders who are now talking about funding us for multi-year progress. We did it, you can do it. And if there's something that I can tell people, it's gonna be this. You will hear a thousand no's, but it only takes one yes. Focus on your one yes. Focus on the people that love you. Focus on the people that want what you're providing because they exist. If you build it, they will honest to God come. We have 19 families 
who have enrolled already with us. We're still deep in enrollment. Look, if you want to enroll, come meet with us, learn about the program, learn how we're different and why we make a, a difference for you. But we have 19 families who have already said yes. That for me is enough. Those are the families that I'm concerned with. Those are the people that I'm thinking about. You cannot allow the judgment of other people, especially those people who don't want to see you succeed because you threaten their power dynamic to stop what you're doing and who you are and what That's you're providing. That's a way to put it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What, um, what, oh, I just lost my question. Um, ah. Uh, Oh, that was so good. And I was listening and not thinking what you were supposed to do. It's all right. It's all right. Um, I'll expound on the last point a little bit. It might help you get back to your, to your question. Um, the other thing that I think is really important, you're not going to build a school for everyone. Right. And I think that's that's in charter. That's yeah. in public. That's in private parochial. It's not going to be for everyone. You've got to find out who your market is. What we have come to understand is that if you are empowered by the charter schools that tell you they're going to do social emotional learning, but they're giving kindergartners 35 page packets to do for homework, you're not in our market. You are not the people that we are looking for. But there are parents who choose that. Yeah. And, you know, here recently, um, <laughs> whew, this, this is going to be the one. Here recently, we've had two incidences with two major schools in, in New Orleans mostly predominantly white institutions, um, private schools that have had serious racism issues. Mm -hmm. Two, okay, one so, such issue, a young lady literally said African-American students need to be hung from oak trees. Mm -hmm. She's still allowed to participate in graduation. Mm -hmm. Families still choose those schools. Black families still choose those schools. Those are not the people that we want at ABBA because the people that we want at ABBA know that's not the environment for them. That's not the environment that's gonna enrich your spirit. That's not the environment that's gonna enrich your soul. That's not the environment that's gonna prepare you best for the world that you're about to take on because they clearly don't care about your life and your liberties, your happiness. If they're going to allow you to be subjected to a student that they give no disciplinary action to, no consequences for literally being so bold as to say that in front of faculty, staff, and students, put it in print and say, I'm not taking it back. So if that's what, what you're going for as a parent, you're not going to be um, at the best place if you come to ABBA because we're teaching our students, despite that existing in your real life, you're still great and you can still build and you will still build because you have everything you need in you already. White ice is not colder at ABBA. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's so sad, you know, just that story of, you know, the what's happening right now in New Orleans. And, you know, your response is true. You know, that is really why there is choice and why we need choice in education, why we need more options, because parents will, like you said, parents will continue to go to that school and that's their choice. But for every other choice there, we need more innovative options. Absolutely. And, um, you know, especially for our students, you know, especially for brown and black students who have often had, you know, the, the, the shorter end of the stick. And so to provide a lot of different school options for our kids is really, really important. Um, for that school to be the only, you know, player in the field we will really have we will have a problem, but there is a, a an array of of options, and parents can say, you know, I'm gonna I'm not gonna put up with this. I'm gonna walk with my feet. I'm going to be empowered and do this. Um, uh, what is something that um this uh, yeah? What is something that when you think back on you know either students uh that you you served um. And that, you know, just brings you so much joy and happiness. A funny story of a student that you've served that just, yeah, fills your cup. Um, there are thousands of funny stories. Um, thousands, actually. I'm going to talk about Connor. <laughs> Connor is going to be a kindergartner next year. But Connor has no problem telling you which way is left. Okay. 
Um, last week, we shot the commercial for ABBA Healing. Connor was in the commercial. Connor said, I have to do the commercial and I have to be good because if I don't be good, mommy won't let me play with blocks and she won't give me candy, right? So Connor says, um, he, he sits there and he smiles. He answers two questions and he says, I'm done. I'm going to go play with blocks now. And honestly, that's what we empower at Abba Healing Academy. We don't want students to feel like they have to sit and be obedient. We want them to explore and be their full human selves and love it. That's that's what we really want, right? So that's our funny story. I'd like to tell you one more, not funny, but encouraging. Um, recently, there's a lot going on about my son's graduating class. While they've done amazing things, and I will say this, it's it was a, a 96 or 106 person class, 100% college acceptance, right? $9.2 million in scholarships but nine of those students came through our programming to get their college counseling and career needs because they were IEP students, including my son, who amassed $452,000 in scholarships. Wow. And so that's the business that we're about. Nine of those students at that school were our students that we personally helped, that we took on college trips, that we sent. And we've done that for years because we want students to know that we can make this happen. We've given a lot of those students college scholarships to start their year next year um, because that's important. And so at ABBA, we're doing the same thing. We're fundraising so families can afford this so that we can give them scholarships to achieve the dreams that they've always wanted. And so, yeah, those yeah. are our scholarships. Oh, that's amazing. Now, and, and so for the folks who are, um, who, are look, who are listening or looking at this, um, you can check out um brandy school at abba healing at aba healing.org abba healing.org and that uh website is going across the screen i wish i could share the website um i am having trouble with screen share because your son designed the website right he, did. he really did yeah and um i i please go visit the website her son designed it and it is beautiful yes. um and I wish that I could show it on the screen because it, it, it he did just an amazing job. Um, and at that event in New Orleans, I'll link it below in the description for those uh, who want to go back and see that um, event. Uh, he stood up and was just so beaming happy. Um, <laughs> and you joked around saying you're going to kick him out of the house. He ain't going to kick him out. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm around here crying that he's leaving to go to Houston. Let's be honest. <laughs> But, oh, so uh, he's going to Houston. He's, yes. he's leaving uh, New so Orleans. Houston Baptist University. Um, it's right outside of Houston North. We visited this weekend. He is in love with the campus. They are in love with him. He's ready to go. He's already registered for classes and everything. Oh, oh yes. yeah. And this is your only baby, right? This is, well, you know, he is my only natural born child. He is not the only child that I have collected over the years. Yeah. Um, and so all of my children, they know this, and my students will tell you this because they come on Facebook all the time and say this. Uh, once you're mine, you're never not mine. You stay forever. So there's that. And that's going to be the same for all of our ABBA healing families. They're going to be mine forever. Um, I'll also say this about the website. Yes, my son designed the website. He learned the skills to design that website through our program, Generation Success. But he, along with some of our other students, participated in taking the pictures for that, pulling together the messaging that we wanted to say. Um, it's truly everything about us has been designed by the students that we look to serve. So that's another important piece. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Brandy, for joining this episode of our virtual Black-owned schools tour, where we hop in and talk to founders, school founders all across the country about the wonderful things that they're doing. Um, thank you so much. And please check out her website. If you are in the New Orleans area, and you're interested in doing a tour or something, reach out. Um, yes. And you can, I, there is a subscribe button to her newsletter on the website also. Um, so thanks so much for joining. This has been, been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. We look forward to all the wonderful things that you are going to do with the Black Minds Matter Academy and all of our ambassadors.